Hello guys, this is finally the time I'm ready to start building my new PC. Uh, this is the hardware that I will use. So if we start with the motherboard, I will use the MSI MPG-X570 Gaming Plus. It's based on socket AM4. Uh, for the CPU, I will use the 3rd gen Ryzen. It's the 3700X. Uh, for the graphics, I will use the AVGA GeForce RDX 2070 Super. As for cooling for the CPU, I will go with air cooler. Uh, this is the Hyper 2012 EVO. I will install the system on the MVME M.2 9070 EVO Plus. This is from Samsung. As for storage, I will use also a Samsung. Uh, the 860 QVO, it's a 1TB SSD. For memory, I will use the G-Skill Ripjaw V-Series. Uh, those are 3600, 8GB multiplied by 4, so we'll have a lot of memory. And to power up this system, I will use the Roswell Photon 750 watts. And you already saw the case that I will use in the previous video this is the Roswell Tor V2 it's a full tower ATX PC case so as I said in the previous video this won't be a PC guide build since there are way more qualified uh, youtubers to show you how to build a PC properly like uh, Bitwit, Paul Hardware and Jace Two Cents. Now this video will be more uh, to show you which part I've used or which what hardware I've used, how I did it, how I built my system. I will also compare my build with this hardware to some pre-built PC online. Uh, so this way at least if you're planning on buying a PC uh, in the near future, you'll know how much you pay for the labor. It might change your mind on building your own PC instead of buying a pre-built one. So without wasting any more of your time, let's start this build. The reason I decided to go with this MSI 570 motherboard is because the review were great uh, on Newegg and on Amazon. And since it is the last version or the latest version of AMD motherboards, uh, I'm certain I won't have any problem with compatibility, whatever the hardware I will install on it. Even when being about 50 bucks cheaper on Amazon, I decided to buy my 3700X on New Egg uh, simply because the review on Amazon were horrible uh, regarding the shipping or the packing, people complaining about receiving the wrong chip or receiving a chip uh, already open and even already installed. When installing a CPU, you need to make sure you align the two marks or the two triangle together because a CPU go only on one way. So if you're not sure, you better read the instruction before installing it on the motherboard. And the same goes for your M.2, there's only one way to put it in the slot. If you don't know, if your work table is safe for your hardware, you can do just like me and use the box of your motherboard to work on it and it will be perfectly safe. It is the same for the memory stick. There are only one way to put them. As you can see, the notch is not perfectly centered, so you need to make sure to put it on the right way. It is now time to install the standoff that will hold the motherboard. If you're not sure where to install them, you can have a look at the documentation that came with the case and you shall find where to install them for every size of motherboard. Another important thing to do before installing the motherboard is to install the IO shield. The IO shield is the little panel with uh, the description of every connection behind the computer or behind the motherboard. And if you forget to install it, you will have to remove the motherboard or live without an IO shield. 
I'm now ready to install my power supply and as you can see it is a full modular power supply with a cable that came separately compared to a non-modular power supply where you have a big chunk of wire getting out of the power supply casing uh, so you end up with a lot of wiring, wiring that you have no use for it so by uh, installing a full modular power supply you only install the cable that you need there is a lot of opening in the back panel of the case so it's your choice to pick the one you like better so you have the best cable management as possible and when you install your cable especially the one that connect to the motherboard make sure it doesn't pull too hard on the connector because the last thing you want is break a connector on the motherboard because you will have to obviously replace it and you do the same for every other cable the one for the power of the motherboard your front panel the gpu etc I can now connect my fan seats now I'm done uh, working on the top of the PC and again here I'm getting the wire behind the back panel and I'm sticking it out right at the bottom of the motherboard so I will see as less wiring as possible. I'm now connecting the front fan going by the same old scenes uh, all the fan either or the fan connection or at the same air in the same place on the motherboard since I will use a push-pull setup on my cooler master air cooler uh, I'm installing a Y so I can connect both fan on the CPU fan either Now I can start untie this front panel cable mess uh, and start connecting them on the motherboard. Starting by the 3.0 USB cables. Again here I'm getting through the hole the closest as possible of the connection on the motherboard so the wiring or the cable uh, is showing as less as possible. Now it's time to pass the rest of the front panel wires through the back panel so I can connect everything. The only cable that would get through the back panel on the side of the motherboard is one of the SATA cable, actually the only SATA cable from the eSATA port on the front panel of this PC case. It is now time to connect every other cable from the front panel. And if you're not sure where the cables are going or are supposed to connect on the motherboard, uh, it is usually explained in the paperwork that come with your motherboard. And if you're still not sure or if the documentation that come with your hardware doesn't explain where you connect it, you can have a look at Paul Hardware or J's Two Cents YouTube channel and you will find a video regarding this matter. And what I'm doing now is removing the backplate and the support that come with the motherboard so I can install my Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO. Now applying the thermal paste just before installing the cooler itself on the CPU. And I must say that this cooler is pretty complicated to install. I mean, not the cooler itself, but the support that come between the back plate and the cooler itself. Now I'm getting ready to install a fan that will go on the cooler. The one on the left will be set as a pulling fan and the one on the right will be set as a pushing fan. Therefore the push-pull setup. So the air will go through the cooler from the left or from the right sorry to the left. And after that on the exit fan in the back of the case. Now that everything else is installed, it's now time to install the graphic card, which is the most expensive part or hardware of this build. 
I can now install my one terabyte SSD and after that I will be ready to turn this thing around and start working on the cable management on the other side of the PC. It only left the SATA cable and the power cable to connect to the SSD and after that I will start tying up all this wiring so I can close this lid for good. As you can see there's some red wiring hanging down from the top of the case and uh, those wires come from the potentiometer that I'm supposed to use to control the speed of the fans but I decided not to use them simply because I will set up the fans curve in the MSI BIOS later. It is finally done so let's firing this up and see if everything's work like it's supposed to be. If you wonder who is crying, it's Luna right there. Say hello, Luna. It's my five months old baby. I was a bit worried about about the graphics card. So let's see if I have any anything showing up on the screen. It looks like it is in a boot mode. Hey, hey, hey! It's enough. Oh, I got some system showing up. <clears throat> yes, I am in the BIOS. Everything seems to work. We see the motherboard air, the CPU air, my memory. I have 32 gigs. I have 30, 32 gigabyte of RAM. I can't see my my one terabyte but I cannot see my M.2 might not be insert properly fortunately I installed my graphic card in the second slot so I still have access to my M.2 slot so I will go and check it out as soon as I will update the BIOS of the motherboard I will go in M flash yes I want to restart and M flash so it I will be able to update the BIOS via my via the, the USB stick I just connected. I pre I previously download the latest version of the BIOS for this motherboard. Now it's supposed to be in this folder. Why it doesn't show up down here? Okay that it just did I sure want to select this file yes I am don't bite the cord little girl Now it should restart by itself. I will tap delete so I can go back into EFI. There we go. Now I will enable uh, AXMP. So as for memories by default it's set to 2133 megahertz and i want to enable all the potential of my uh, memory so i have ddr 436 100 megahertz as profile profile one so i will enable it and why does it doesn't want to 
I have only one profile, so I believe it's automatically going on profile one. Now we'll reboot again and go into boot mode so I can install Windows. So, so if I go UEFI, this is the flash drive I have in, and I have Windows uh, tool installed on this USB flash drive, so it should go into boot mode automatically and boot into with no Windows installation. I believe it's going into Windows, so it's a good sign. Yes, it's a good sign. English uh, time currency. Next. Still now. What are you doing, baby? Don't play in the garbage can. Uh, I don't have any product key. Pro is fine. Hey, it's enough, baby. It's enough. I will start the installation after that. We'll go outside. Yes, I accept. Custom install. I want to go into the into this M.2 drive. The 500 gigabyte. Should be pretty fast. Oh yeah, it was pretty fast. I'm used to my whole uh, Dino's War computer, my A1070, 6700. I mean, with integrated graphic in the CPU or APU, should I say? <clears throat> this system should be a little faster. Can barely air the fan, even with the side panel open. So it's a good thing. Who now? Come here. Let me see baby. Say hello. Yeah, I see. Turn it back. Here it kisses. Taco kisses. She likes to give kisses. That's how I don't. 35% almost done. We, we, oh, I did a half. At least everything's working. I'm pretty happy because it's the first time I'm building a computer from scratch. So uh, I'm pretty happy, but I must say I watched a lot of uh, build from Paul Hardware, BitTwit, and uh, Jace Two Cents, as I, I mentioned earlier in the video. But I must say that Paul Hardware uh, is pretty awesome as explaining installation or the beginner uh, PC build guide. Almost done baby, almost done. Since I have an opaque side panel so we can't see inside, the cable management was not a priority but still I am very happy with the result. Uh, we barely can see the cables around the motherboard apart from the blue USB 3.0 cables that connect on the bottom of the, mo on the motherboard but even then they are pretty much hide behind or under the graphics card. Now that Windows is installed and good to go, let's watch some benchmarks, but don't forget that I'm running everything on stock setup, processor, graphics card, and memory, but uh, I'm curious to see how good it will perform. So let's jump to it right away. So let's start by Cinebench R20, shall we? I've run it five minutes ago and I scored about 500 points lower than an identical system uh, because probably uh, I had a lot of software open like my uh, media player, my editing software and also some uh, picture editing software. So now that I've turned everything off, uh, let's watch what kind of result I will get. 
Let's speed up this process a bit, shall we? And now I'm scoring just a little higher than identical system, which is good since I'm running, as I said earlier, a stock setup. But now let's run some benchmarks. I will start with F1 2019 uh, with all set up at ultra high. I've choose to run the benchmark in the rain because it's more demanding on the GPU. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. So it ran an average of 84 FPS with a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 97. So now let's see how it will perform with Car Mechanic Simulator 2018 with graphics quality set at high. Here it scored well over with a minimum of 42.5 FPS, an average of 48.5 FPS and a maximum of 67.7 FPS. Now let's watch a benchmark of Sniper Elite 2 with a setting also at high. This game is obviously pretty old, but it get a score of 106 of minimum and 373 FPS as an average. 
Now let's watch a benchmark of Tom Clancy, the Division 2, against with setting at I. Just by watching the movement in the water, the fog in the background and the dust floating in the ray of the sun, it's pretty obvious that this game will be very demanding on the graphics. And it scores the magic number of 60 FPS with the graphic preset at Ultra. I'm very happy to see those results and I'm very pleased to know that I will be able to play pretty much any game I want without uh, having to lower the setting of the graphics so I don't have problems. This is it for now guys, if you have any question, please post them in the comment section below and I will answer to all of them as soon as possible. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so you'll be notified as soon as I will release a new video. So on this, I wish everybody a great day, see you later, bye.